हेलो फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम लास्ट वीडियो वी वर डिस्कसिंग द नॉन मेटालिक पाइपलाइन वन ऑफ द पॉपुलर वन इज आर टी पी पाइपलाइन टूडे वी विल लर्न हाउ टू जॉइन आर टी आर पाइप्स और आर टी पी पाइपलाइन जॉइंट्स एंड ऑल्सो एट द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो वील डिस्कस सम टिप्स फ्रॉम द मैनुफैक्चर फॉर सक्सेसफुल इंस्टॉलेशन मीन्स डूज एंड डोंट्स फॉर आर टी पी इंस्टॉलेशन बिफोर वी गो टू द मेन सब्जेक्ट लेट एस चेक द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ द लाइन पाइप्स फॉर आर टी पी टू हैव एन आइडिया दैट हाउ मच प्रेशर इट कैन हैंडल नाउ एड एस बिकॉज आवर जेनरल आइडिया इन आवर माइंड इज आर टी आर एंड आर टी पी इज फॉर यूटिलिटी पाइप लाइन्स एंड फॉर लो प्रेशर हियर इज ए स्क्रीन शॉट फॉर ए टेबल फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द मैनुफैक्चर फॉर आर टी पी आर टी पी इज अवेलेबल विथ हाई डेंसिटी पॉलीथिलिन एच डी पी ई और हाई टेम्परेचर पॉलीथिलिन एच टी पी प्रेशर बैरियर्स दी टेम्परेचर रेटिंग्स आर वन हंड्रेड फोर्टी एंड वन हंड्रेड एट्टी डिग्री फॉर एन हाइट रेस्पेक्टिवली वैल्यूज गिवेन इन दिस टेबल बिलो मे बी वेरी स्लाइटली डिपेंडिंग ऑन द प्रेशर बैरियर यूज लेट एस लुक इन टू द डाटा शीट एंड टेबल फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द मैनुफैक्चर Uh, i will read only few of them uh, for a quick idea 300 series rtp of course the recommended maximum operating pressure is 300 psi but it is tested in the factory in a much higher pressure which is 1698 if you go for 750 series we can see the recommended maximum operating pressure is 750 psi and 2 and 1/2 inch 3940 whereas it is for 6 and 1/2 inch is 2912 psi here you can see the rating increasing 1500 series the recommended operating uh, pressure is 1500 psi it is tested at 4718 psi to a range of 4800 38 psi depending on the diameter the smaller the diameter the the burst test pressure can be more 2500 series pipes are recommended for maximum operating pressure of 2500 psi it is burst tested at 7971 psi and more 2250 series the recommended operating pressure is 2250 but the burst room temperature is 7411 psi so this is to give you an idea these rtp pipes can also bear tremendous pressure like carbon steel pipes high pressure rtp and rtr can be used to replace the metallic cs pipelines easily now let us go for the joining technology the rtp service representative or a rtp certified installer will install all service fittings on locations assistance may be required that one contractor may provide particularly with larger diameter rtp to manipulate that pipe while the connector is being installed the rtp compression slip connector is a mechanical fitting that attaches to the pipe by application of compression two general types of connectors are used one is service end and another is pipe to pipe end you can see the pictures in the slide connectors forces are typically applied through wedge loading of a slip between two body hubs the effect of internal pressure and temperature change on axial forces in the rtp line pipe shall be taken into account when making up fittings in preparing for attachments to another system or fittings the needs of the customer and system must be considered and the proper end configurations ordered planning should consider the application and connection means to be used the assembly procedure may vary slightly depending upon the type of end connection involved service end connector the first type used at the end of a pipe run to connect the pipe to another system or another fittings available with a variety of end configurations commonly used in pipeline applications rtp standard configuration is an ansi rf flange other configuration supplied on request rtj flange np pipe thread hammer unions and other configurations specific to end user specification pipe to pipe component the second type used to join two lengths of rtp pipes together 
attachment is the same as the attachment of the service end connector except that there are two pipe ends to be prepared and the connector has two slips and two slip nuts. The attachment procedure for a connector involves the following general steps. The pipe end must be is cut to square. The RTP rimming tool is used to size the inside diameter of the pressure barrier. A chamfer is cut on the exposed end of the pressure barrier. The slip nut and slip are positioned on the end of the pipe. The service end or the pipe to pipe connector is fitted with O-rings, lightly lubricated and inserted into the pipe end. The connector and slip nut are threaded together and the threads tightened. Caution need to be taken in attaching compression slip connectors to the RTP or the system. The pipe must not be rotated or subjected to torque. O-rings should be installed and lubricated just prior to final assembly to avoid any damage. Now, connector selection. In order to ensure that the proper connector is used in the line pipe product, measurement of the ID and OD of the pipe are used to determine which connector component should be installed. Components are then selected based on the range they are designed to fit and how the line pipe measurements fit into that range. Pipe to pipe components. End terminals. At the end you can see there are metallic risers which is bringing the pipeline above ground. All RTP pipelines we are talking here are underground. So to bring it above ground and connect to the piping system in the facility we are using metallic risers. The metallic risers are connected with three common methods for terminating the RTP line pipe. First one is surface tying. In this configuration, the pipe is brought to the surface in a gradual bend and tied in with a connection. The bell hole has to be prepared with a suitable bait shape to ensure that the pipe is not exceeding its allowable bend radius. Rigid riser. In this configuration, the pipe is terminated subsurface to a rigid riser. The riser can be coated and the RTP connector is often a weld neck or a flange. A riser chute through which the pipe is brought to the surface. So in this case metallic risers not required. An iron support which is termed as chute is holding the non-metallic pipe to help it go above ground. You can see the photo for your easy understanding. We will discuss some factors for successful installation which is always recommended by the manufacturer. The four most important factors for successful installation. Use manufacturer field service or manufacturer certified installer to oversee installation. Follow good pre-job planning practices to follow the job documentation outline and follow the job documentation exactly as required. Use care in preparing trench and backfilling the manufacturer line pipe. Avoid the most common mistakes during open ditch installations. Line pipe is damaged while being moved after unspooling. Deploying line pipe directly into the ditch minimize the likelihood of damage during field operations. However, this is not always possible due to access or scheduling. In these cases, the pipe is developed along the right of way for later movement into the ditch. And additional steps have to be taken to prevent damage. The following are the best practices and hazards to be avoided when it is necessary to handle line pipe. If pipe is to be deployed and then moved into the proper position afterwards, it is important to provide enough slack in the areas where movement is required. For example, if the pipe is deployed around the inside of a field bend and must be moved to a trench in the center of the bend, the pipe requires slack to make up the additional linear distance through the bend. Do not attempt to move the pipe that has insufficient slack by using a chain or sling tied on at one point. This will result in a point load that will damage the pipe. The proper method is to pull slack into the point where the pipe is to be moved and then the, move it into the place. Slack can be pulled into the line by attaching a sling at a point where the pipe has 
no wind and pulling on the sling in a direction parallel to the pipe. If a pipe is further than 20 feet from the trench, move the pipe in multiple passes. At any time pipe is to be moved, it is recommended that a manufacturer certified installer to be present. Third situation is line pipe is damaged by equipment. The most common cause of damage is from excavation equipment such as backhoes used to move the pipe or backfill. This can be avoided through care and diligence, but additional steps can be taken to minimize the likelihood of this occurring. When the line pipe is laid into the right of way for future trenching, it should be located in a safe spot away from the traffic and other operation should be properly marked or flagged. In cases where the pipe is accidentally contacted by heavy equipment, it is imperative that the location of the contact be marked and brought to the attention of the manufacturer certified installer for assessment. Contractors should understand that it is easier to repair a point of known damage than it is to find the damage after failure on test or in service. The fourth instance is line pipe is damaged by improper backfill. Backfill that comes into contact with line pipe should be loose dart and contains no heavy or sharp objects. The trench bottom should also be smooth with no sharp objects or marl or stones beneath the pipe. The pipe should first be shaded with loose dart, the first one or two feet of cover. Large rocks or objects can then be placed on the top. Where the Local soil conditions make it difficult to control backfill quality. Additional steps should be taken such as grading, using imported padding or jacketing the pipe. When soil is frozen, extra care must be taken not to allow the frozen lumps to come into the contact with the pipe. The ditch should also be filled in a controlled manner that does not introduce any lateral or shearing loads on the pipe. Now, another instance is line pipe damage through misalignment. Manufacturer line pipe connectors are proven to be extremely reliable when correctly installed. Proper alignment of the pipe and connectors is critical for successful installation. Particular attention to be paid in the following issues. This is warned by the manufacturer. At risers and connectors, it is important that line pipe is not installed with a bend at the back of the connector. The transition in stiffness between the line pipe and the metal connector can cause significant point stress on the pipe if it is installed in or close to a bend. The trench bottom should be level and the pipe and riser properly supported at the point where the pipe enters the connector and attaches to the riser. This may require sandbags or a driven pile. The line pipe must also be properly aligned and supported at the entrance and exit of steel casings or bores. If misaligned, the weight of the backfill causes a shearing load on the pipe against the edge of casing. Again, the trench bottom should be level and the pipe supported so that when the trench is backfilled, the pipe is not pressed against the edge of the casing. Hope guys you have a good idea of how to join a RTP pipes and fittings. We must follow the manufacturer recommendation and tips, do's and don'ts to have a successful installation. From my personal experience, RTP joints never leaks. But there are failure in the hydro test. Why? Because construction equipment like backhoes or any kind of um, excavating device, they damage the line pipe. Either they not understand or they want to hide, they never report to their management and backfill the line. The line is getting leaked during hydro test. When the leak reveals, the investigation shows it is a mechanical damage on the pipe. So be careful during the fabrication and till we backfill and make the bomb. Always make sure that nobody is using the non-metallic pipeline bomb as a road to cross their heavy equipment over. It can cause excessive stress on the non-metallic pipeline and it may break or bend 
or damage thank you guys if you learned something if you like the way i teach please please like my channel refer to your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you signing off showman meet you in the next video in this series